Hello everybody, David DeFranco here from TechSocial.com. It is October 4th, 2011, the day of Apple's Let's Talk iPhone keynote address. Tim Cook took the stage as CEO of Apple. Obviously that happened about a month or so ago. This is actually his first keynote ever um, as CEO, so I think it's a pretty exciting time for him. And I really can't wait to watch it on, on my Apple TV later to see how he compares to Steve Jobs. Not that anybody can technically replace Jobs, you know, style of presentation, but I'm just interested in it, in it overall. Anyway, enough rambling. Um, today was their iPhone event. They talked about the iPod, iPad, and especially the iPhone 4S, which is their brand new mobile device. So let's get started. As usual, I have my notes on my iPad right here. So if you see me looking down, well, I'm obviously reading notes because it literally just ended within 10 minutes. You know me, I like to do this quick. Okay, let's start out with some basic stats. I'm really not going to bore you guys with this. If uh, you're really, really interested in this stuff, you can just check out their uh, press info on their website at apple.com. Uh, they talk about, uh, you know, retail, the Mac, Lion, music, iPod, all that good stuff. They really did stress this. The iPod market share is at, is at 76%, but it is still a large and important market for Apple. And that's word for word, uh, quote, Edge right there. Kind of hyper if you can't tell. Anyway, next up is the iPad. It is the number one tablet in the world. Duh. I mean, I'm not trying to sound like an Apple fanboy, but you really cannot even touch the iPad right now. It's just so far ahead for at least a couple years to come. So, uh, huge props to Apple again for becoming such a huge success in the tablet market. When I gotta stress this again. People dissed me left and right when I was one of the supporters of the iPad. People said, oh, the iPad's going to suck. It's going to fail. Well, not to sound cocky, but I was right. <laughs> so anyway, um, it is 74% market share, which is great. Okay, next, Scott Forstall took the stage and he talked about all of iOS. Uh, it was basically like a recap of WWDC 2011, which I got to admit was kind of boring because we already heard this stuff. But... They kind of have to go over this stuff to fill the time gaps uh, leading up until iPhone 4S. How's that clock again? All right. First of all, they did announce something that I didn't really expect, and it's a new app called Cards, and it does exactly what it sounds like. You can create and mail cards directly from your from your iPhone and iPod Touch, which I think is pretty cool. I mean, it's a free app. Uh, it actually costs money to send the cards, I believe, uh, but still, it's a free app, so you really can't argue with it, so pretty cool. iOS 5 recap, again, uh, I just said this a minute ago, but if you really are, but if you are really interested in seeing my recap of iOS 5, just view my video actually right here. I'll put a little annotation right there. Click that, view it up, all that good stuff. And finally, iOS 5 is finally coming out next week, October 12th, for free. All right, next up is some guy called Eddie Q. I may have seen him before in keynotes. If I did, he's not really ringing a bell right now. But either way, he talked about iCloud. Uh, again, just to recap, WWDC 2012, 2012, 2011. I didn't say 2012 earlier, did I? Hopefully I said 2011. It's almost 2012. Uh, they talk about iTunes, photo stream pages, you know, and the cloud stuff. Find My Friends is finally something new and official. There were rumors about this months ago. Um, apparently, it lets you easily locate your family and friends based on location. I just said locate based on location, didn't I? I don't know what I'm saying, guys. No, but seriously, um, this is actually really cool. Like, if you're in some big park or whatever, such as Six Flags or Disney World. They may have used Disney World as an example. That's that's why I just thought of that right now. Uh, but again, it's a free app, free service. I really don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, iTunes Match for just $25 a year. You can scan and match the music library based on their 20 million songs or something like that. Again, all these DSRs are, on their, are, are um, on their website. The main point of this video is to talk about the iPhone for us. And finally, um, iCloud officially arrives on October 12th iTunes match by the end of October in the U.S., followed by more countries by the end of the year, which is always good. All right, next up is Phil Scheller. He took the stage to talk about the iPod. Got to be honest, guys, don't expect anything mind-blowing here. They didn't really focus on the iPod that much, uh, but they did release new iPod Nanos, sort of. Uh, now the icons are bigger and it's easier to navigate. That honestly wasn't an issue with my current iPod Nano, but hey, um, I guess it was something they needed to do. Now there are no sensors required to track your steps. Before this was a requirement if you wanted to track your uh, running miles or whatever with those little Nike sensors you put in your shoes. But now apparently it's built into the Nano, which apparently 
I mean, which again is good, it doesn't hurt. Uh, you get 16 new clock faces, which I think is a weird feature to implement, but pretty cool, I guess. Because uh, I guess people use the iPod Nano as a watch, which I think is pretty sweet. And of course, it's available in seven colors, eight gigabyte for 129 US dollars, and 16 gigabyte for 149 US dollars. Dramatic. And now let's talk about the iPod Touch. Just like the Nano, it didn't really get any huge boost. If it did get some spec boost, I really didn't follow that, uh, you know, to be honest, just go to apple.com slash iPod Touch to see more information. But the biggest update here is that it's now available in white, which I will be buying. I will be selling my current iPod Touch fourth generation for the white one, which I'm really excited about. Again, that one was free. I'm pointing out my iShrine shelf, uh, so I'm really not losing anything there. Uh, but anyway, the iPod Touch is now available in 8GB for 199 32GB 299 and finally, 64 gigabyte at 399. So we're getting up there in storage, which is pretty sweet. Okay, your reason for watching this video is hopefully the iPhone 4S. Now, first of all, let me say I realize a lot of people are disappointed that there is no official iPhone 5. Uh, but guys, I gotta be honest. I mean, were you really expecting an iPhone 5? I cannot stress this enough. Do not go by rumor sites. You will only be disappointed at the end of the day. I myself am upgrading from an iPhone 3GS, so I am stoked about the iPhone 4S. It's going to stomp all over this. I'm technically skipping a generation, so it's going to be such a huge update. So I am in no way disappointed by today's iPhone 4S announcement. If anything, I'm freaking pleased as hell. First of all, it has the same exact design as the iPhone 4, which you got to argue is a good thing because, you know, that way you don't have to buy new cases or anything like that. And now it has an A5 chip, dual core CPU, which is the same as the iPad 2. Dual core graphics, which are now seven times faster than the previous iPhone, which um, is amazing because, as you guys know, I love to game on my iPad and my iPhone and iPod Touch, uh, so it's a huge win there. There's really nothing bad about that. Increased battery life. You now get eight hours of 3G talk time, 14 hours of 2G talk time, which is fancy talk for Edge, six hours for 3G browsing, nine hours of Wi-Fi browsing, 10 hours of video time, which is pretty good and 40 hours of music, which is more than enough. And next up is a brand new antenna design, which I didn't really expect, but it makes sense because of last year's overly dramatic complaints. Um, the iPhone 4 now has a new antenna design. You can now switch between two antennas uh, for transmitting and receiving. You don't do it yourself. The iPhone 4S automatically does it for you. All right, this next feature I'm really excited about. It's an all new eight megapixel camera. I am freaking excited for this because, again, I'm stuck with the 3GS right now, and the camera on here, it doesn't suck, but it's just not nearly as good as the iPhone 4's uh, 5 megapixel camera. So now this new 8 megapixel sensor has backside illumination. Hunter's making noise over there. It now gathers 73% more light, which is always good, 33% faster, 26% better um, auto white balance, and, and it now has face detection, which is pretty sweet because... Line has face detection, iPhone has face detection, so it only makes sense to be in the um, iPhone 4S now. But it also does 1080p video. Guys, that's awesome news for me. So expect the comparison video between my Panasonic HTC SD600K, which I'm recording with right now, versus the um, iPhone 4S. I realize they're two totally different devices, but I figured this is a good excuse to make a nice you know, 1080p video comparison. Uh, series. Not series, it's just gonna be one video. Oh, and by the way, Squirrel! For those of you who watched the keynote, you'll know what I mean. Or at least watch the live blogging. The keynote's not out yet, but actually by the time you watch this, the keynote might be out. Alright, now I'm just rambling. Let's talk about AirPlay mirroring. AirPlay mirroring. That's a tough word. Say that five times fast. Mirroring. No, do it. Seriously, yell. Yeah. I'm waiting. Okay, now that you're done that, um, you can do mirroring, meaning you, you can just show your iPad um, via wired or wireless connections. Yes, I realize this is not something totally new. Uh, you've, you've always been able to airplay video and stuff, but the completely new feature of this is that you can now airplay your entire display wirelessly, meaning your home screen, your email, games, anything you want, which I think has tons of possibilities, which is pretty sweet. And finally, the biggest feature of them all, and I'm getting closer for dramatic effect, is Siri. Now, as you might know, Apple bought a company called Siri a while ago, or Siri, I'm not really sure how to say it. 
Um, for those not aware, Siri is a, um, what's the best way of explaining this? An audio assistant to help you with common tasks. I guess that's the best way to put that. So if you want to say, what is today's weather? And then it'll say, today's weather is so-and-so Fahrenheit in so-and-so town. Or you can say, will it rain today? And then it'll actually say, yes, it will rain, or yes, it might rain. How cool is that? But it doesn't stop there, guys. It gets pretty complex. You can actually book restaurants. Say, book restaurant, for, well, you would obviously say the restaurant's name, say, say book so-and-so for four people. And it would actually get the restaurant information from Google Maps or whatever map service it uses, and then do it for you. But what's even cooler is, check this out, and this is an official example they used during the keynote, so, so I know it works. Wake me up tomorrow at 6 a.m. will automatically set you an alarm to wake you up tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock. Guys, how freaking awesome is that? I realize this is not technically anything like brand mind-blowing new, but the fact that it's now integrated into iOS 5, that is a huge deal, honestly. The fact that it's built, in, built into the iPhone 4S now, it's pretty sweet. And I and, oh, and by the way, I believe it's exclusive to the iPhone 4S. So if you want a reason to upgrade from the iPhone 4 to the 4S, I gotta say, Siri is pretty tempting. Oh, and by the way, Siri will be launching alongside the iPhone 4S um, in beta form, so they're still kind of testing things out, and things will improve over time, obviously. But it will work over both Wi-Fi and 3G, which is pretty cool. And yes, I say pretty cool a lot. It's just my thing. And last, but certainly not least, let's talk about prices. The iPhone 4S is available in 16 gigabyte at 199 US dollars, 32 gigabyte at 299, and just like the iPod Touch, it's finally getting up to 64 gigabyte at 399. iPhone 4S pre-orders start on Friday, October 7th, and they're finally releasing next week, October 14th. And yes, I will be buying mine right away. I seriously can't wait. Oh, and the best news of all for many people out there who are not on AT&T and Verizon, yes, it still works on both those services, but it's now available on Sprint. Sorry, T-Mobile, I guess, I guess Apple doesn't really have much love for you guys, but the fact that it's now on three major providers, that's always good, and that's just great because now even more people can get iPhones in hand. And that is that, guys. Overall, I gotta say it's a solid Kino. I real again, I really gotta stress this. I was not really disappointed at all because I'm upgrading from the 3GS. I know I'm saying that over and over again, but you gotta understand, if you're using a 3G, a 3GS, or even the original iPhone, I don't know how you're doing that. Uh, believe me, the iPhone 4S is definitely worth an upgrade if you want my personal opinion. That's basically a fact. I mean, if you, if okay, guys, if you're using a 3GS or anything under that. Trust me, upgrade, you will love it. If you're using an iPhone 4, I can't say whether it's worth the update. Uh, I mean, if you're a spec core like I am and, and, and you really want the A5 chip and seven times faster graphics and especially the Siri uh, features, Siri, Siri, I'm sorry, I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, uh, then maybe it is worth it, but um, that's up to you. I really can't decide on your purchase for you. However, if you're anything like me and you always need the newest gadget, let's face it guys, you're going to upgrade. There's really nothing wrong with that. Just sell your current iPhone. It covers most of the cost of the iPhone 4S, so you're really not losing much. And yes, that's a squeak you probably just heard in the background. Hunter loves his toys. Oh, and finally guys, I cannot forget to mention the iPod Shuffle is not dead because they actually took time to put it on, you know, one of their slides. However, they didn't even mention or show the iPod Classic whatsoever. So is it there? I'm really not sure because, well, I'm making this video right now and as I speak, Apple's website is probably already updated. So so if you really want to find out if, you know, the classic still, still exists, go over to apple.com slash iPod and you'll see for yourself. And that about wraps it up, guys. What did you think about the keynote overall? Was it disappointing? Was it pretty solid overall? I thought it was solid. I mean, they didn't really expect, I mean, they didn't really announce anything I was expecting. Because, uh, again, rumor sites are not news websites. Got to keep that in mind. It's really important because at the end of the day, you're just going to disappoint yourself. Because today, I thought was pretty solid. So, post in the comment below, what was your favorite announcement? What was your least favorite, an favorite announcement? I'm talking too much. I need some coffee. Actually, I'm already hyper enough, but I do need a drink. So, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time.